Good evening and thank you for joining us on this special edition of Nightline and we are live in Singapore where just hours ago we witnessed history made here. President Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un meeting face to face. We watched the walkout, the handshake, entering closed door negotiations, first one on one and then with their national security advisors. Hours later, signing an agreement before the world at which Kim Jong-un committed to complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. My colleague George Stephanopoulos speaking with the president just minutes ago about this unprecedented summit, about the letter they both signed. And George, we watched your interview as it came in. This was really something to witness. You asked so often about trust, the president indicating to you that he does trust Kim Jong-un, at least for now. At least for now, that's right. He said, maybe come back in here. I'll say I made a mistake. But for now, he says he trusts Kim Jong-un. This is the room where it happened, David. Look right behind me. There's the table where they signed that joint communique. There are the flags of North Korea and the United States. And the president came in saying it has been in a very, very intense 24 hours. Said he's gone 24 hours straight, no sleep at all, and really was um, charged up talking about this meeting with Kim, Kim Jong-un, believing it's an historic moment. But as you said, uh, there are a lot of questions over whether Kim Jong-un can actually keep this commitment to complete denuclearization. The president has been very critical of the Iran nuclear deal, says it's the worst deal ever made. So one of the questions is, will this North Korean deal be tougher uh, than the Iran nuclear deal? The president says it can't be any weaker. He says he believes that Kim is committed to complete denuclearization. Says it may take time, says we're gonna have to watch the steps, says we are gonna have to verify it, but he believes that commitment coming from Kim Jong-un. He also said that Kim Jong-un is prepared to take steps towards that goal that go beyond what was in this communique and says that th those are gonna be announced uh, very, very soon. He said, in fact, we could, they could be announced by Kim Jong-un as he returns to his country and he's already on his way right now, including the destruction of more nuclear sites. Of course, we're gonna to have to wait and see if that's gonna happen. And the big question on the table, as you said, that I asked the president is, can you trust Kim Jong-un? Can you trust a dictator like this? Here's one of the exchanges. Just a few months ago, you accused him of starving his people. And then listen, here's the rub. Uh, Kim is a brutal dictator. He runs a police state. Uh, forced starvation, labor camps. He's assassinating members of his own family. How do you trust a killer like that? George, I'm given what I'm given, okay? I mean, this is what we have, and this is where we are. And I can only tell you from my experience, and I met him, I've spoken with him, and I've met him, and this was, as you know, started very early, and it's been very intense. Uh, I think that he really wants to do a great job for North Korea. I think he wants to denuke. It's very important. Uh, without that, there's nothing to discuss that was on the table at the beginning, and you see a total denuclearization of North Korea, so important, and he wants to do the right thing. Now, with all of that being said, I can't talk about, it doesn't matter, we, we're starting from scratch, we're starting right now, and we have to get rid of those nuclear weapons. A little piece of news there. Hey, George, I heard you ask him about confirmed Ron in our. Yep, go ahead. Yeah, well, I was just gonna say, confirming that talk that actually he had spoken to Kim Jong-un before this meeting today, spoken over the phone, something the president hadn't uh, confirmed in the past. I did ask him about uh, that famous phrase from Ronald Reagan, trust but verify. The president did say that the, any agreement he reaches with North Korea, any agreement he reaches with Kim Jong-un will be verified. Of course, the devil's gonna be in the details there, David. Is that really something that Kim Jong-un is gonna accept? Will he, ins will he accept inspectors inside his country to verify the destruction of nuclear weapons? We're a long way from there right now, but the president is convinced that they made a start towards that goal today. George, you continue to drill down on how how inspectors would verify. I think we're going to have to wait and hear uh, how that plays out. In the meantime, the president also told you that the, the country loves Kim Jong-un, that his country loves him, that there's a fervor there for him. But as you know, in the days and weeks to come, the president's going to be asked about human rights inside that country and the fact that there's so much propaganda, the people of North Korea are forced, essentially, into loving their leader. Hey, and that's a turnaround from what the president had said in the past. It said in his own State of the Union where he talked about Kim starving his own people. That's what we were getting at right there. I mean, uh, you know, th those are, those are going to be the kind of questions the president faces uh, coming out of this. Is Kim really someone you can trust? Is he really committed to changing his country and to treating his people uh, better beyond uh, the nuclear program? That's an open question right now. But it is clear, at least right now, that the president... 
uh, believes that he started uh, something new uh, with Kim. You, saw, you heard him say, you start from some people will look at that and say, boy, that's not possible. That's hard to believe. It's hard to believe that someone like Kim Jong-un is, is going to change his ways from being the kind of dictator he's been. We're, we'll have to see what happens in the coming days and weeks. The president said that Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is going to take the lead in these negotiations going forward. He said that based on what happens uh, going forward, he would really like to see Kim, Kim Jong-un at the White House at some point. We're far away from that. Uh, kind of a uh, kind of a summit follow up right now, but the president believes he got things started. He is also though open to the possibility that maybe it won't work out. He believes that Kim Jong Un is different from his father, is different from his grandfather, is committed to making a real change, a real agreement with the United States that he's not going to back away from. Uh, I think most of the rest of the world is going to wait and see can can he take concrete steps. Uh, that put meat on those bones, that put meat on the bones of the statement today, and they convince the world that he's really changed and really willing to give up those weapons. And George, one more question for you before you go. This was an extraordinary interview George did with the president just moments ago. And George, you also asked about potential changes for U.S. military in the region. And the president talked about uh, war games in the region and how we could see things evolve over time, uh, his part of this agreement. Yeah, that was a big concession the president said he's willing to make right now. He says he's willing to stop these joint military exercises with South Korea that have antagonized uh, the North. And he went on in some detail uh, about that, said he's not talking now about taking United States troops out of South Korea or doing away with the nuclear umbrella, uh, the nuclear guarantees we give uh, to protect South Korea. But he is willing to cut back on those military exercises, at least for now, and to see what Kim does in return. That is something that the president has never been a real fan of uh, coming into this meeting, but it is a, con a concession that he made. He wouldn't go into great de detail about the other kinds of security guarantees uh, he's willing to give uh, to Kim, but he says that's a start that he's willing to make right now uh, and a concession he's willing to make now. George Stephanopoulos, having just interviewed President Trump on this day of history here in Singapore. George, I know you'll have the complete interview uh, later this morning on Good Morning America. George, thank you. John Carl, our chief White House correspondent, Martha Raddatz, the whole team standing by to talk about what we've just heard from the president on this trust but verify something we heard from Ronald Reagan so many years ago. Nightline continues in a moment. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.